to shoot. Pull back, step back, three. Bottom! The handoff. Jones for the time. Oh, he's fouled! And one! He's still loose. Doherty the heave. Oh, oh my God! Southern Utah. Oh, wow. Southern Utah is going to do something they've never done. Welcome to Whack Wednesday on this Straight Out of West, Straight Out of Whack podcast episode. This week we are previewing the UTRGV men's basketball team. With me, I have head coach Matt Feger on the podcast. Matt, appreciate the time on this Wednesday. Kyle, thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So I I want to ask you first off. Uh, this week, I believe it was on Monday, maybe it was last week. There was a big sponsorship partnership with the McAllen Airport. How I want to ask you about everything along with that. What's going on at UTRGV that excites you so much? Uh, it's just it's uh, progressive. I mean, the um, we have a unique situation uh, here. I think uh, we have a forward thinking president. We have a forward thinking AD. Um, the school is is growing leaps and bounds. Uh, our, our community is now behind, uh, uh, the Vaqueros, uh, our airport, which I think is pretty cool that the, uh, McAllen International Airport has now become the home of the UTRGV Vaqueros and where, you know, when you, when you land in your first vision of the Valley, you're going to get to see our school, you know, from gate to gate. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it, it's a big, it's a really a big deal. And, and, uh, you know, this isn't the same institution. Uh, that it was eight years ago when it became UTRGV. This, this, it, it is very progressive. Um, it's, I, you know, I think it's the second largest UT school system in the state uh, behind Austin. So um, I, that's just a credit to, to uh, Dr. Guy Bailey, Chase Conk, with where they're wanting to take athletics, and and the, and then the community of Edinburgh, McAllen, you know, the whole Rio Grande Valley. I, I think it's. Uh, I think it's pretty neat, man. We got a lot of things going on. We're just like um, a, a lot of other places in the country, um, like like Phoenix, where we're growing in population, like where you guys are at out in Utah. I mean, people are moving to where uh, you know they, they, you know, nice weather. Uh, economically, it's sound for your family. Uh, McAllen, Texas, is voted the safest city in the state of Texas, so. There's there's a lot of good things going on here, and, and uh, uh, that's why I took the job. I mean, it uh, it's it's the league made me want the job, and the and and because I think if you look down the the lens ten years, fifteen years from now, a lot of these schools. And I think I've said this to you before. You know, Grand Canyon, Abilene Christian, Utah Valley. You know, the Stephen F. Austins. You know, they've uh, Cal Baptist. Those those schools. I think will have a different meaning to their names uh, 10, 15 years down the road. Now, I'll be an old retired man by then, but um, it's just I think there's a lot of new tradition that is coming, and, uh, uh, you know, our league isn't up and coming. Now, we've got to keep the standard going as a league totally from top to bottom, uh, but the last two years uh, has been, um, you know, great for the league, great for the league, great for the name, you know, Everything's moving in the right direction. Really good coaching. Um, we've got to get our brand, and that's what I appreciate about you, Kyle. You're the one guy that um, really promotes the league. Um, we've got to get someone on your bandwagon to, to get you more followers. And, and uh, I'm not that guy, uh, but we've got to we've, – we've, you're, you're literally uh, an uh, innovator within yourself. I mean, a lot of leagues have, have a lot of people that follow them. You are the one that that has invested your time, effort, energy to follow this league, and I commend you for that because it's a um, it, it's an exciting league. And and as a fan, I, I've told whoever just friends is like, you know, get on the ESPN Plus. You don't have to watch us play; just watch you know some of the Utah Valley and Stephen F. Austin play. Watch watch Cal Baptist. Watch uh, Grand Canyon. Watch, watch Seattle play. I, I watch Tarl. They're they're all unique. Uh, yep. They're all well coached. Um, uh, you know, they play in fun environments. There's fun cities. It's, it's just a, it from top to bottom, it's just a pretty good, pretty good league. Matt, I appreciate that shout out. I mean, it, it's a, it's a great league, like you said, and it's just gotten better. It's, it's just from year to year. And, and we saw it last year 
you know, with where Utah Valley, Grand Canyon, and everybody, you know, finished. And it's just going to get better, you know. And even with the the departures of a Sam Houston, New Mexico State, it's just getting better. Like the, the like you said, the coaching and the recruiting and the the talent that is in this league is just uh, a really good. I do want to ask you the facial hair. I don't think I've ever seen you with the facial hair. Is that something new? Is that like come off during when the season uh, starts or like, no, you know? no, no. It's just, it's just something I rolled with, man. It, uh, um, it's laziness is what it is. <laughs> it's nothing more than lazy, man. Listen, I've been, I've been bald, um, since I was 29 years old. So basically 25 years of my life, I've had no hair. So it's just a matter of not wanting to shave anymore, man. Okay, I just had to verify. I know that some coaches have said, you know, I go with the beard during the summer, then it comes off during the season. So I just had to. No, nah, the beard, the, the beard is just a, a, a sign of not wanting to fool with it, man. And it just, and it didn't, then it just grows, and you, you, you have to clip it, you have to trim it, and then you got to shave it. And so, I have just, as long as it doesn't bother my face, heck, man, I don't. It doesn't bother me. Sure, sure, absolutely. So I want to ask you. Uh, you guys are arguably the biggest team in the WAC this season. I think I counted six guys, six eight or taller, and four players, six ten or taller, including a pair of seven footers. Talk about maybe the rim protection you're going to have this season. Well, it uh, uh, you know my philosophy has been always: if you're going to make a mistake and recruit and make it big. <laughs> And, and so uh, um, we, we just feel like that uh, you, we, in this league, you've got certain brands and styles that you play against. And uh, my thing has been, you know, do we want to go small and fast like some of the other teams, you know, where, or do we want to try to impose our will with, with length and size? Uh, and that, that's just based on my coaching, but uh, – um, unfortunately, John Chanu is out for the season. He had a ruptured Achilles. So, uh, one of those seven footers are gone. Um, but, um, it, he was having a great summer, uh, really growing and maturing, you know, big guys develop at such a different rate than, than guards. Right. Uh, you got, you got to have some patience with them. Um, but yeah, we do have a very good size and length and, and I think that will help us keep growing as a team defensively, um, where we may have. Some issues offensively that we didn't have last year. Um, it it our, our our size and length may may give us an advantage defensively to to make us better. Um, so, um, you know, I had to do some evaluation of myself and our staff and how do we continue to grow the program? How do we continue to compete? You know, I just don't want to be, um, uh, you know, everybody's every team has to have a team in the bottom. Right. And and I'm trying to get us where we're not in that situation. I want to ask you about that offensive challenge that you have. Like you mentioned, Justin Johnson, arguably one of the – probably the best scorer in the WAC the last two seasons. Will Johnson was a, a sharpshooter. Um, and then Adante Hallman as well. Like, who are you going to lean on? I know you brought in some Juco guys, and you have a lot of returners too. Who – is there somebody that you're expecting to kind of step into maybe that role where he gets 16, 17, 18 a night, or is it going to be kind of by committee where somebody's going to, somebody different is going to have a big night, night in and night out? Well, I, I, I think the better your team is different people contribute. Um, you know, people can, can game plan and scheme to take away one guy, two guys. But if, if, if they don't know who the, the leading score is every night, I mean, that, that kind of gives you a, um, an opportunity to have different guys step up. Now, if you look at our roster returning, um, we have, I think, three guys. If you can, uh, Aaron Freeman, Dalen Williams, uh, CJ Jackson, all scored uh, one or multiple games of 20 or more points uh, uh, in a game. So um, my thing is, Kyle, here, here's the deal. Every team has to have a leading scorer. Every team has to have a leading rebounder. I think uh, – too much is put in performance. Sure. And uh, I, I seen this one time. It, it was a linear graph. I'm not a math person, but, you know, the, the Navy SEALs, uh, we as people sometimes put performance by what I mean, translate points and 
whatever above trust. And so you could have a high performing guy and a low trust level with that person. And that guy is not moving the needle of your team. Right. You know, that because points in, in rebounding is something that that every team has a leader. Uh, what I look for is who's going to lead us and help us win. And so I'm not worried about who's scoring points. Okay. Um, I'm just worried about how do we take the next step in leadership and competitiveness to get better? You know, we scored the ball. We were the, you know, we led the country or a little second in the country in free throw attempts. We played the second fastest pace in the country. I can give you all those analytics. Still we're 15 and 17. So the step is, getting more competitive, getting better defensively where, you know, we were probably 10 possessions away from being, being a 20 win season. And, you know, we lost a heartbreaker at Southern Utah, which uh, no disrespect. I, we should have won the game. Yep. Um, you know, we had a battle with, at, with Tarleton in the WAC tournament. Um, you know, there's, there's, there was games along the line that, that, you know, even though the score, we lost, we lost on a buzzer beater to Sam Houston. We lost to Seattle by two on a shot that Cam Tyson that made – that was out of his mind. That was a yep. great shot. I mean, so, you know, there's three or four on the table that – that um, um, and we weren't fully healthy as well either. We didn't have – you know, we were missing two starters in some of those games. So there was games there on the table that, um, you know, it could have – you could be talking about us being a 20 win team and then there's a different narrative. Uh, but also with that being said, there's some wins in there too, that could have bounced either way, right. the other way as well. So it is what it is. I'm not putting, uh, you know, when you look at what we have coming in, I, you know, um, the Anthony Tipler is a proven score. Um, he averaged 16 points a game at, at, at coastal Carolina. Uh, he's, I think a career 40 some percent, three point shooter. Um, so that's a guy who's proven he can score the ball in division one games. Um, you, you know, I, I, I like, I like the competitiveness of our team. Um, Elijah Elliott was a Juco all American, uh, and he's one of the, he's going to be one of the fastest players in the league. Um, uh, Hassan Abdul Hakeem was uh, a top 10 Juco prospect could have went literally anywhere in the country. Um, so I, I think when you just – if you want me to start off naming guys who could step into those roles, um, you know, uh, Hassan is – his talent level, um, I mean, on what I've seen from the summer and the, and the fall, he's a, he's 6'8 and is a two-guard. Um, and he's got a motor. He plays hard. He doesn't – he's not hard to coach. Um, and – Literally, when I say he could have signed with anybody, and that's like a lot of teams in our league, they got good players. Right. But but when I say he's a high major player, he could have signed with a Pac-12 school. He had Pac-12 offers. Um, you know, at the end of the year, De'Anthony Tipler was probably the best guard in the portal available when we got him. Um, so I, it, you know, I think we've got good players. I, I you know, um, we'll see just how things develop with our team and. We've got for the first time we've got returners. We've yeah. got seven returners. So I, I felt like last year was year one for me. I, you know, my the first year was a situation where, um, you know, I don't know any other coach in America. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I don't know any other coach that's ever taken over a situation where the coach before you pass away during the middle of the season. So there was a lot of 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 still mourning and and hurt and loss for a great man in Lou Hill. And so last year was kind of year one over Kyle. So uh, this is in my, I, I have to look at year one as being just a, 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 a uh, bridge to get the program going. And so this is literally year two and that, so we got to improve. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that in your your post game press conference at the WAC tournament about you know guys coming back and wanting guys to build a culture like that. I mean, the Chanu news isn't you know welcome, right? But that was you you have six healthy guys returning now with with Chanu out. I mean, that's got to be one of the higher numbers in the WAC. I feel like this year. So yeah, it, it is. It is. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a commitment by the kids who want to be in the program, want to get better. 
Um, like I said, living here is, 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 is pretty good. I mean, living here where you've got nice weather, you've got everything at your, at your fingertips. Um, you wouldn't know if you're in, uh, Phoenix or here. I mean, it's kind of, it's very similar. Uh, you've got different kinds of things. So the kids are happy here. Um, you know, the one thing I will say is with this, with this NIL and, and the transfer portal, and this is something that, you know, I'd say all the other coaches would agree. There was three freshmen that played all year last year, only three, none of them are in the league now. And what, what situation in, in the country, if you're at Grand Canyon, would you leave to go to, to that's nicer? I mean, so, you know, UT Arlington, what situation that, that they have, you're, li you're living in the Metroplex. Um, you're living on, on you, you go to school at a beautiful school. you got a beautiful arena. So I, I'm just saying it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things. It's not only us that lost players. I mean, everybody in the league is going to lose players and, Kids are kids, and we, we we benefit from the transfer portal, and we lose from the transfer portal. So um, it's just an, it's just the nature of the beast right now. So I've got to I've got to roll with it. It's very very interesting. And you talked about uh, those freshmen, and one of them played for you last year. So uh, it, it's it's very interesting dynamic that NIL transfer portal, so forth. Um, I want to ask you about your schedule. I, I just took a look at it, and there's something that sticks out to me. I, and I'm going to go to the conference schedule for one. I want to ask you two questions about that. Do you like that you are going to play two games in between your non-conference slate? Um, and then the month of February isn't very friendly to the Vaqueros, so I, I had to ask about that. No, I'm not very happy with it. No, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. Um, I, I don't think we were done any favors in the scheduling department. Um, but it's, you know, I had a coach one time when I said that before, he said, coach, you play, you know, at the year, he said, coach, you play all, you play nine road games and nine home games. I said, coach, with all due respect, you're not playing my schedule. <laughs> yeah. And I want to point this out for the fans that are listening. I, I want to just tell them in the month of February, the Vaqueros play two home games out of eight total conference games. They have a three-game road trip uh, with, well, three straight road games at Utah Tech, at Southern Utah, at Stephen F. Austin. And then after a pair of home games, they go to Utah Valley, to Seattle, and to Grand Canyon to end the month of February. And then they're at California Baptist, as part of a four straight road game stretch to start the month of March. So when I saw that, I just had to ask, and I know I told Jonah, I think when I was texting him about setting this up that like, you couldn't be happy about that at all. No, not at all. It just, it just doesn't seem like that's right. That somewhere they've got to figure out where you can split that up to have at least a couple more home games. So um, yeah, I just, I just figured I'd ask you about that. Yeah, it, well, you ask our women's coach, and he's probably elated because he's got the he's got the mirror schedule. Right. Um, my my thing is, as long this is what I will say, you can put me on record. Um, we have ten teams in our league, correct? Eleven, but you play it ten. Home, yeah, you play ten home games, ten road games, right. eleven. So, wouldn't it just make sense if you're going to give us this schedule this year, just to mirror it next year? Yeah. Okay, so. I'm just let's just put that out there to be on record as saying if it makes logic that if we're going to play this schedule to be fair and balanced, wouldn't it be logic just to flip it and play the, the, the same schedule next year? Yep, uh, that makes sense. So we would, so you're basically putting us eight of 10 on the road or eight, uh, uh, six of eight, whatever it may be. Eight, you know, we got, we got a hard schedule. Right. Just to stay fair and balanced, wouldn't you say let's just flip the schedule and let and give us so everybody plays the same way? I that's all I'm saying. Um, so if you're going to make me do that, I think it's just logic that you allow me to play the same schedule in a in a, in a mirror situation. 
like next year where you have those six of eight home games in the month of February. Yeah. Correct. Because my thing is, is that our fans in, in look, there's no students on campus in January. Okay. So to build a following, you, you're, you're saying, okay, you're going to go pl- play eight games or six games in the month of February away from home. How does that help your fan base? Yeah. Um, so we got to learn how to become road warriors. That's just all part of being mentally tough. I, it's uh, uh, to, to flip the page when we get if when we get if and when we get through this. Um, I had the same situation my first year at Austin P. We had uh, two straight. We had a four game road swing, two at home, four on the road. So we were eight of ten at uh, my first year. We won twelve conference games. So um, of an eighteen game schedule, we went twelve and six my first year. So even though the odds may be against us. That's a rallying point for us to, to, to grow as a team and to, and to challenge ourselves, to become better. Well, and to be honest, you were kind of road warriors at times last year. You beat grand Canyon, Dalen Williams with that put back. And you were one of two teams to win at wisdom gym at, at Tarleton last year. So there, I mean, I, I, it's not going to surprise me to see you guys win games on the road. I'm yeah, I mean, you, 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 you put you put that in there. We lost in overtime at Southern Utah. Um, yeah, we were down one point at Sam Houston with about five to play. That was a back and forth game. The final score doesn't resemble how close the game was. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't. Um, I, I I think when you can go on the road and play, I think our guys play uh, when you can fight the first five minutes. I think you get you start getting traction and 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 playing on the road is sometimes better than playing at home. Um, you know uh, that's something that's just a mentality. I think, uh, and that's something I got to create here. Um, I think one one year at Austin P, we won sixteen games away from or seventeen games away from uh, our home court. Um, so it's just something we have to become mentally tougher about, and uh, we we that's. That's my job to prepare those guys. So I, you know, when you, there's nothing better than road wins, and 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 we were good enough last year. This is the fine line about our about growing a program. You mentioned two two games. We were good enough to win at Grand Canyon, who won our conference tournament. Yep. We were good enough to be one of two teams that won at Wisdom Gym throughout the year. We we played the team to overtime on the road that played in the conference championship in Southern Utah. So there's that fine line that I'm talking about, about our team is that we're growing as a program. Yeah. Uh, you know, bum Phillips once said, you're knocking on the door. Now we got to kick it in. You know, it's like, you know, we've got to keep growing. So um, I, I'm excited about what we'll get, what we'll get ready to do. Matt, before I go, before I let you go, I'm going to, I ask every coach this, your go-to snack when you go home, when you go on the road, something like that, what's your go-to snack? A lot of coaches give me that healthy answer, but I'm curious what your. Uh, go-to, we're talking during the season? Yeah, anytime. Just your go-to snack anytime. Uh, man, I, I, if, if I had a go-to snack, I love barbecue potato chips. Okay. Uh, I'm a connoisseur of uh I love going out and finding the local brand of barbecue potato chips, like whatever the local brand in, in Utah is. I like to find that. What's your brand up in Utah? That's unique. Oh goodness. You would ask that question. Um, geez, I don't know. That's a I'll, good di- I'll, I'll discover it. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I get, I Google what's the local barbecue chip wherever I go. And, um, I try to taste the, the, if I can, I love barbecue potato chips. So uh, that, and um, I don't think you could ever go wrong with a, a you know, a, 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 those new nerd clusters or sprees or, or um, um, sweet tarts. I don't think you can ever go wrong with any of those. I like it. I like it. Barbecue. Forget about all, all, forget about all that crap. These guys give you that, that, you know, <laughs> I'm a country boy, man. I, I, I like, I like what I like. I like drinking diet Mountain Dew. I like, I like uh, good, uh, pinch between your cheek and gums. I, I, I like doing that stuff. So, um, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm unapologetic for, for the way I, way I am. Um, hey, no, I like it. I did. You know what? That's a, it, it's straight shooter. Like you said. So I like it. I like it. Everybody 
Matt Fieger, UTRGV men's basketball head coach, year three down there in Edinburgh. Big things happening for the Vaqueros. Matt, always appreciate the time. Thank you, Cal. Thank you for uh, promoting our league. Absolutely. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your WAC Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.